Morning guys, welcome to Saturday question and answer. And I'll tell you what, the question that we're going to try and answer today is a big time deal for this space and especially when you consider current events. So guys, I think it's going to be an absolute amazing one. I'll tell you what. Mm. Wow. First sip shared with you guys right there. Boy, I'll tell you. I absolutely, you know how your body is, you wake up and you're like, oh, I cannot wait to share that first sip. I'll tell you, the first sip of that coffee in the morning is important. And because you're important, that's why I try to save it and share it with you. Anyway, guys, the question that we want to answer today is, of course, surrounding this whole deal with the settlement that, or the dismissal, actually, where the SEC dropped the whole Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, you know, allegations and things like that, how they lost their interlocutory appeal, how back in July they literally lost the decision as to whether or not XRP itself was a security and on and on and on, and whether or not they should will appeal or whether they won't appeal and when can they appeal and this is a big deal because of course it, a lot hinges not just for xrp on the answer to this question a lot hinges on how this whole space is going to be governed and by whom and of course we know the heavy hand of the sec and gary ginsler wants to be the absolute czar over the whole space but boy are they ever getting slapped down by the court time and time and time again and it is a major major deal now having said that back there in july 13th what ended up happening, of course, was that Judge Annalisa Torres came out with her summary judgment. And in that summary judgment, she flat out said that XRP in and of itself was not a security. And on top of that, she said, hey, the sales in the secondary market to individuals like you and I buying from exchanges, they did not represent investment contracts and that those sales could not be deemed securities either. And then she went on and talked about programmatic sales. Now, yes, there were some definitely some institutional sales that she said that with Ripple, that those demonstrated, of course, you know, investment contracts and things like that. And what did she use? as her method of adjudicating that and coming to that decision. Well, she used the Howey test. Now, for a lot of people that we've thrown it out there, oh, the Howey test, the Howey test, a lot of people really don't know what the Howey test was. Well, the Howey test is a case that came out of the 1940s. And in this case, there was an individual out there that was selling you know, investment contracts related to orange groves and saying, hey, I'll put in all the effort and work. You just invest in this. And when the, you know, the price of this goes up, well, you'll make a buck and da, 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 da. Well, of course, the course that came out back then and they said, hey, here, this represents, you know, a securities transaction. And now here we're going to make a decision. And out of that came this, this case. And that's how law is formed here. You know, when we deal with a common law system, it's based on legal precedents and that's, you know, a judgment decisions in prior cases. And out of that came a bunch of conditions that courts have used time and memorial since then to literally determine whether or not certain things would actually represent in uh, securities. And one of them is this, of course. The whole idea of an investment contract and this is very very pivotal now back then the oranges themselves were not deemed to be securities and why well if there was a case that the oranges were securities then like i say every grocery store in america would have had to register with the sec you know because they were selling oranges obviously right well of course that's nonsense the oranges themselves weren't the securities it was the investing contract associated with them and guys that is the exact same for XRP. Now, the SEC wanted XRP itself to be deemed a security. And back in July 13th of this year, Judge Annalisa Torres says, not on your life. And why? Well, because XRP without an investment contract doesn't represent anything. It's not like a stock. When you go out and you buy a stock, and let's say, you know, you go out and that you buy a stock in a company. Well, of course, that company, you're relying on their efforts, their management team, their performance and all that to, you know, possibly cause your investment in purchasing that stock to rise. So you got it on the investment of others. But the investment contract is this. Hey, look, you get voting rights. You may share in dividends. You get a percentage of ownership in that company related to the amount of stock that you hold, don't you? But when we went out and we bought XRP, did we get any of those things? Well, of course we didn't. I mean, Ripple, we didn't get any, you know, 
voting rights in Ripple. We're not going to share in dividends in Ripple. Hey, we don't even get to own a piece of Ripple, do we? No, what we own is a commodity. What we own is a is a digital asset called XRP. And another way to liken it is this. Imagine you went out there and you went down to your local bullion deal, you bought yourself an ounce of gold. Now, just by holding that ounce of gold, does that mean that you got stock and barrack gold and that they owe you dividends and that you get to vote on various things and such and such? Well, of course it doesn't, does it? Why? Well, because, hey, how many gold producers are there in the world? There are heaps and heaps and heaps of them and they're digging gold out of the earth all, all around and getting it from all various means and stuff like that. But you own that gold. Now, a lot of people go out and they definitely buy gold hoping that the price of it is, will go up so that when they sell it, that, hey, they might make a buck or two. Now, it, that is called, of course, speculation. Now, does speculation alone demonstrate an investment contract? It does not. And this is where Judge Annalisa Torres came out and said, listen. When you go out and you purchase XRP just to hold it like that, you are not involved in investment contract. Therefore, you are not purchasing a security. Now, the SEC, of course, you know, when they went and filed their interlocutory appeal, hoping that they could expedite their appeal and all this kind of stuff, what were they really asking for? Well, guys, they were at, they were really going against the programmatic sales. They were not trying to appeal the status of XRP de being deemed not to be a security. That is not what they were appealing. What they were trying to appeal is that when it's sold in various ways, that those sales represent and demonstrate investment contracts. Why? Because they wanted to tie all of these sales to the efforts of Ripple. And that's where they were, you know, saying, hey, look, that's how we see it, you know, representing an investment contract. But as we know, look, a number of different companies out there, you know, utilize the XRP ledger and XRP. And I think the number is way up there in the thousands. And it's not just Ripple. And this is where their argument falls right down on their face. And of course, what did Judge Torres say? Well, guys, I'm going to go through it right here. What actually happened? I have an article here out of Reuters. Let me take a sip of this copy. <laughs> hmm. And I'm going to read this article out of Reuters and get this, guys. There it is. Big article. It's going to kind of give us a little rundown. Now, and this came out on October the 3rd out of Reuters. And it says, a federal judge on Tuesday refused to let the United States Securities and Exchange Commission appeal her recent decision involving Ripple Labs, a ruling that has been seen as a major defeat for the regulator in its efforts to police cryptocurrency markets. And that's exactly what they want to do, guys. They want to police it. They want to govern it. They want to be the, you know, the top dog and the enforcer in this space. And isn't that what they're doing? Regulation by enforcement. And that is not the way it's supposed to be. But listen to what she says here. In her July 13th decision, U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres in Manhattan had ruled that the sale of Ripple's XRP digital token on public exchanges complied with federal securities laws because purchasers had no reasonable expectation of profit based on Ripple's efforts. The SEC had sought permission to appeal Judge Torres's findings about programmatic sales of XRP and about other distributions. It was not about XRP itself being a security or not. As a means of payment for services, saying an appeal would be an important to a large number of lawsuits. But the judge found no substantial ground for difference of opinion about her findings and did not agree that an appeal would materially advance the case forward to a conclusion. So she's saying, hey, look, even if you appeal it, you know, there's nothing that you're presenting here that is going to show me that, look, um, I'm going to change my mind or that it would the result would be different. And why is that? Because guys in an appeal, you're not presenting new evidence. You don't get to present new evidence. You don't get any new witnesses. You don't get any of that. All you're doing is listening, is trying to say, did the judge make an error in judgment or an error in law? And if you can't demonstrate that, hey, it's not happening. And that's what she's saying here. Now, she also said in her decision that her decision did not conflict with a July 31st ruling by U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff in Manhattan, who said the SEC had a plausible claim that Terraform Labs 
Terra USD token was a security when sold on public exchanges. Torres said Rakoff had been considering Terraformer's motion to dismiss the SEC case and was required to accept all reasonable inferences in the regulator's favor. A trial in the Ripple case is scheduled for April 23rd, 2024. Now that is what happened there. And of course, now we know that the SEC has completely dropped, you know, their, you, you know, uh, I guess I their case, I suppose, say it like that. But basically, their indictment against, you know, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. And now folks are saying, well, they did that so they could immediately appeal what was going on there and they can redress this whole deal, you know, with respect to whether XRP is a security. Guys, they are not going to appeal that, number one. What they would appeal, if they can appeal, and if they could appeal immediately, it would be the programmatic sales. Let's remember that. That's what that is. Well, hey, just today... Something came out from John Deaton that I want to touch base on with respect to this question. And I've got the article right here to read it. And it says, it says this, and this is just four hours ago. John Deaton weighs on US SEC's possible appeal and rationale in the XRP lawsuit. With the growing debate around whether the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is now entitled to appeal immediately. Now, guys, this is a big question. Are they going to do that? Can they do that? Pro XRP attorney John Deaton agrees that the SEC can appeal sooner than what they could before, but there will be no immediate appeal. Finally, the SEC didn't dismiss this case because it wanted to get a faster appeal. They didn't dismiss it because they wanted to get a faster appeal. And this is his rationale. John Deaton on October 21st joined the crypto community's discussion, which of course is today, on whether the U.S. SEC can appeal against Ripple immediately after it dropped charges against Ripple executives. The rationale behind the SEC's move to drop charges against Ripple, CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Executive Chairman Chris Larson. With the SEC voluntarily dismissing claims against Ripple CEO and Executive Chris Larson, the trial Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Lyon. The trial scheduled for April 24th will not happen, said Deaton. He added that the penalty phase of the case must finish first for a possible appeal by the SEC. Guys, that is a major deal. We are probably talking months for this whole a penalty phase. And listen, the settlement about that before this case moves forward. Now, although Rand is correct, this is John Deaton quote, that an appeal by the SEC will happen sooner because the SEC chose to dismiss the case against Garlinghouse and, and Larson. It is incorrect to say that the SEC can file that immediately. Guys, they cannot do it immediately. Citing the library lawsuit as an example, Deaton highlighted that the summary judgment decision was announced in November 2022. The appeal to judgment became only possible after eight months of the ruling. Thus, the library filed an appeal on September 7th after additional discovery, including interrogatories, requests for production of documents, the SEC, and, and such and such. The SEC, SEC sorry, reduced the fines from $23 million to 130,000. Boy, what a reduction. Wow, that is phenomenal. However, an immediate appeal by the SEC is likely not to happen. The regulator dismissed the case for failing to prove Ripple executives aided and abetted charges. The witness list of subpoenas for certain individuals to testify is going to be interesting, said Deaton. Guys, I'm telling you right now, what's going to happen next? In my estimation, a lot of these other guys is you're going to watch Ripple and the SEC sit down at that table and they are going to hammer out some kind of deal. Now, listen, when you see that the library fine was $23 million and get dropped down to $130K, well, here we're looking at $722 million. My guess is that's going to be dropped down way, way lower than what a lot of people even expect. And I think the big, big reason is this. Although the SEC can appeal after they get through this whole penalty phase. The likelihood of them doing it is almost next to none. And why? Guys, they are, would be risking losing and losing big time because if an adjudication comes down the road and they absolutely lose that on appeal, remember, an appeal isn't new evidence. Appeal is not new witnesses. An appeal is just, it was an error in law made or an error in judgment. And it's not demonstrated that there would be. And if they do appeal, guess who gets to hear it again? Judge Annalisa Torres, do you think she's going to turn turn a, a, around on her whole decision? And then it goes to the second 
circuit court of appeals and those guys i'm telling you it is not going to happen in my estimation it's not going to happen so I think what is going to happen is we are going to see these guys sitting down at the table a number of various times and a settlement is going to get hammered out and hammered out in a big, big way. Now, will it happen in short order? Guys, I think it'll probably happen either before the end of the year or definitely before we get into January, February next year. That is my estimation of what's going to happen. That is the answer to all these folks coming out and dumping as much fun as possible. Oh, well, the SEC is going to immediately... No, they are not. They are not, and they cannot file an immediate appeal because there's so many other things that have to be absolutely ironed out before that can happen, and primarily this penalty phase. Do you think this penalty phase and this settlement is going to get resolved in two weeks? I mean, I hope so. We all hope so. But I highly doubt that. Guys, we got months on that. And then again, when we when it does happen, I think it's going to be a massive, massive deal. And think about timing too. But up there, I think in April, March or April, somewhere in there is the Bitcoin happening. And in this space, boy, is that ever a massive deal. And you're watching XRP already sitting on these exchanges and being primed and every other bull run what's happened. Hey, we've only been on one exchange at a time. Back in 2017, it was only Poloniex. And of course, in 20. 2021 it was only uphold guys what is coming next in my estimation is going to blow the doors off of what most people even expect i'm telling you it's going to leave them mind boggled wow mm. anyhow guys i sure hope you enjoyed the answer to that question and i hope you have an absolutely fantastic saturday now remember guys we are hosting sugar on sunday tomorrow nuggets of absolute genuine encouragement now hey i sure hope to see you there and until then guys have a fabulous one and take care